Coach, guys, just uh, your thoughts on uh, nine out of ten drives touchdowns. I guess a pretty good day for the office. It was, it was a pretty good performance by the guys. And, and the biggest thing that I'm really proud of our players is they kind of focused on they focus on our process, you know, eliminating mistakes, um, trying to play penalty free, trying to play turnover free. Obviously, we had the turnover down in the little red uh, at the goal line that kind of that kind of haunts me and cost me a little bit there. But uh, uh, really proud of the way they prepared last week. And I think, that, you know, their performance on Saturday was, was a direct reflection of how they prepared. Coach Chris Ball kind of put it on himself, I guess, the left-handed, you know, the, the one turnover, just the left-handed snap to, to Tyler, just happens, I guess, right? I mean, Yeah, those things happen. We, we practice under center snaps all the time. You know, that's part of our offense, part of our system. Uh, it's not what we, it's not the first time we, we've done that. Um, we actually get those snaps also in pregame. So some things happen, you know, within the game, and obviously uh, uh, we got that out of the way, so we look forward to obviously correcting those mistakes. But that's not only kids, not only anyone. Obviously, those things just happen sometimes throughout the game, and uh, look forward to bouncing back from it. Uh, you know, Tyler just went through his reads the correct way. You know, he, he really managed the game the right way. And, uh, um, you know, obviously uh, did a great job finding some check downs early, which I thought was very, very important, being able to get the ball to the back when pressure showed in his face. Uh, so you saw the poise and, and, and leadership of him. Uh, but then also rallying, rallying guys, you know, throughout the game, you know, keeping them in the, in the game and keeping them focused. Uh, made some big time throws, obviously, on a deep shot to Xavier Restrepo. Um, and so you see Tyler's ability. I mean, you see his leadership. Um, you know, obviously, it's, uh, you know, everyone's always put that, uh, uh, that, that number out there that he's had to throw for 300 plus for so many games. But, you know, Tyler's not focused on any of that. Ty Tyler's focused on winning and leading his team uh, to be as successful as we can be. And when you've got a leader like that, you've got truly a special player on the team. Restrepo had a big game. Really, really proud of Jake and, and his performance. And one of the things that uh, Jake really displayed to us was uh, his pocket movement was phenomenal on Saturday. Stepping up in the pocket, moving around, I believe two or three of his throws, he had someone in his face and made some tough throws. Uh, and so to see Jake go out there and execute, I think it goes, uh, it goes really far for helping build confidence, obviously not only in himself, but in the players around him. And we truly believe that uh, we've got quarterbacks in our room that can go out and lead us uh, any day of the week in, in a game scenario. How about uh, uh, Jakari? He, he played a little bit, right? I'd say. He did. Jakari did, and he did a great job. He, uh, obviously, he had an opportunity to get in a little early. Obviously, there was a false start in on the play. But, uh, you know, just the, the growth of that room and what Coach Ponce has done with those guys in that room, um, really kind of making those guys play all together and collectively um, has, has been really fun to see. And, you know, each one of those guys has a role on our team. I know, every, obviously, um, we've got a star quarterback in, in, in Tyler, but uh, our backup quarterbacks and Jake and, and Jakar, they're preparing to be stars. Uh, and their number can be called at any point, and we've got the utmost confidence they can go out and lead us to wins. Can you talk about Restrepo's performance and who else stood out to you from the receivers? Yeah, Xavier, you know, Xavier had another, uh, another great uh, performance, but it's been a direct reflection of how he's prepared all camp. You know, every camp, um, he's a guy that's shown up every day to work. Um, details, execution, um, playing at a very high level. Um, so when you, when you practice at a high level, you know, your game performance is going to be at a very high level as well. And so uh, that came as no surprise to me, and obviously it was very rewarding for him, and, and that goes a long way as far as his confidence as well. Um, you see Keyshawn Smith, the impact that he made um, shortening the field, I, I think, um, you know, when you look at the offensive success, uh, it's directly tied to the special team success of our, of our team. You know, defensive success and special team success. And so uh, when you're starting at the plus 50 or, you know, you're, you're you know, on the other side of the field, you know, you feel pretty good about as a call, as a play caller what you're going to call and, and the plays you're going to put your players in position to be in. And, you know, to see guys like Xavier playing on special teams, Keyshawn Smith playing on special teams, um, you go on and on. Frank Lyonson's playing on special teams. We've got a number of guys that are making contributions um, however they can for the team, and that's ultimately how you build the team first. There were no drops in, in the game. How big of an accomplishment was that for the guys in your room? It was huge. You know, when you look at it, I think we finished in day uh, 89 or 88% uh, completion percentage. Obviously, I believe the numbers were 21 and 24. Uh, and obviously, those, those three incompletions were throwaways. Great decisions by the quarterbacks to eliminate any type of negative player sacks. And, uh, you know, but that was the expectation kind of going into the game with how those guys had prepared last week. I think we had finally hit our peak the last two weeks in practice. And, and you know, like I say, I always go back to the process. You know, it's a direct reflection of how you practice. And, and uh, you know, we went 
for about a week not having any type of drops or anything like that. And so, you know, our players, uh, they understand, man, that they, they want to perform at a very high level, and they know they've got to practice at a very high level to do that. Does the coach get any credit for that? Like, what has changed from the first three weeks of camp to now to where these guys are catching the ball? Oh, coach gets zero credit for that. These, these players are a game now. Uh, we've got great kids, great players, and, uh, uh, it, it, you know, the only thing that we get on the coaching side is we get – uh, tremendous uh, gratification and pride in going out and seeing our guys being able to be successful. Um, it's great for them. It's great for the families. Obviously, it's great for uh, Miami football and the brand that we have. And so we've got good players. We've got talented players. And we expect those players to be talented players in game-like scenarios. And Saturday was the day that they showed up and, and, and they did deliver. You mentioned Keyshawn on special teams, but in terms of like the offense and passing game, wasn't involved much. I guess, why did it work out that way? And is getting him more involved this week yeah, and, uh, that's a great question. Just unfortunate that it didn't happen that way. You know, we uh, we took some shots early. Obviously, the ball didn't go his way on times where we kind of felt we could have been had some advantageous looks to get him the ball. The ball was successfully completed to other players. And so sometimes that happens. And then obviously, once you get a lead, right, you're not throwing um, certain certain plays. But uh, one of the things that we did and we wanted to accomplish on Saturday is we wanted to get a rotation in at wide receiver. And so when you look at us, we played seven different wide receivers. And, and amongst those se uh, seven, Six of them had a volume of 20 to 33 snaps. Uh, you know, so uh, we kept the rotation going as we've done all camp, obviously building a uh, building, uh, building competition in that room, but also building confidence that, you know, each and every one of our guys can go out on the field and help us win a game. How valuable was a game like that where you get a chance to see, you know, a freshman lineman get in for 15, 20 snaps? Uh, Lucius Hamill's only been here for like a week, but, you know, we got in for a bunch, you know. How valuable is, it, is that film and a chance to see them play? Huge because uh, it reinforces everything that we believe in in competition. And in fact, uh, that's, let's talk about the tubes when they got in because they did a phenomenal job. They did an absolutely phenomenal job to see guys up front um, just, you know, executing assignments, opening up holes. Um, we had some of our better runs um, when some of our backup players got in. And so I think that's a testament um, to, to building competition, but also it's a testament to those guys preparing. You know, taking coaching and understanding that their number may be called. And, you know, uh, none of those guys that got in the game um, ever felt like they weren't going to play. You know, they felt like it, whatever, you know, happened, it could be an injury, it could be a substitution that they had to prepare themselves all week for their opportunity. And it obviously showed with the success they had. So we were, we were really proud as a coaching staff. We started our meetings off yesterday, really highlighting, you know, some of those clips that happened uh, later in the game because, you know, if we can build uh, from within, and we can continue to push our twos to prepare as ones, we'll have a special team. And what do you think of that, Frank? It just seemed like he was a very, very difficult tackle with that. He was. Yeah, and Thad, uh, he's got great balance and body control, and Thad did a really good job for us. And, you know, obviously we faced a tough, you know, tough situation going into the game with the adversity of uh, uh, being down some backs, but we knew someone was going to have to step up. Uh, and our kids, all, all, they all believe in themselves. We believe in them as coaches. Uh, and it's exciting when you have a young man like that who's kind of waited for his opportunity to get a chance to go out there uh, and really compete at a very high level and showcase what he has the ability to do. Josh, what's, what's he like? What is that like? I mean, he was seen very patient last year because he, he had such a high average you know, per, per, per rush all the time, but he didn't get in as much as some people would have liked. Yeah, that personally is a kid that's just, he's a very quiet, you know, he doesn't say much, always has a smile. Um, but uh, he shows up every day, you know, and there was a point this spring, um, if you kind of go back then, that was our only scholarship running back in the spring at certain points. And so, you know, that has really had to kind of take a, uh, uh, a kind of a workload on his shoulders and, and really try to, you know, prepare his body, you know, even for the physicality, the strain uh, each and every day in practice. And he's done an exceptional job, uh, you know, just showing up every day, coming to work. And, and so uh, he's doing everything that we're asking of him. Um, obviously, we're putting a lot on his shoulders as well as Henry Parrish, who's a guy that I thought played phenomenal for his first game uh, here at the University of Miami. And so um, we're going to need a lot more from our backs. Obviously, that was a great start. Um, Coach Smith has done an exceptional job coaching those guys and developing those guys. Um, but uh, we've got the utmost confidence that whoever we hand the ball to, that they'll be able to, to get the job done. I, I also want to ask you about Southern Miss. Have you ever in any way faced them or anything you know about them and the difference between game and one, one and two? Yeah, so I think the difference between game one and game two is obviously going to be the uh, a little bit more aggressive style defense. Um, I think this is a uh, 
Uh, there's a team coming in here with a chip on their shoulder. Obviously, they lost a very tough game this past week in four overtimes. And uh, you have a ton of talented players on the defensive side. Very aggressive defensive caller, defensive play caller. I think their blitz rate is at about 50%. And so uh, they bring it, you know. So we're going to have to have some challenges up front, obviously blocking movement, uh, being able to ID things and make sure we keep our quarterback clean in protection. Um, and so we're looking forward to it. Now, obviously, we know each week, uh, as we show who we are, people are going to try to defend what we do best. And that's one of the things um, that you have to be conscious about in college football is also self-scout yourself. You know, figure out how people are going to try to attack you and, and try to have the answers for it. Well, there's a few more for Coach Cash. Well, I just wanted to follow that up with the, the difference between you, your guys. Supposedly, you make the most improvement a team from game one to two. Is that well, yes, you do, but I, I think for the maturity um, of our team, it's, it's focusing on the process of just being 1-0 and each week. And, and so, you know, that process for us is going to be how, do, how well do we handle success. Uh, we had two weeks to kind of build ourselves up leading up into the first game. Uh, now you go to a game-by-game -game routine where um, you haven't had as many practices on this new opponent. Obviously, the front structure, the back end structure uh, changes a little bit. So our, our players have got to learn a new a new defense that they're going against. And we're going to do things differently uh, schematically and stuff. And so um, just being able to handle success, uh, showing up every day to work and prepare it, and, you know, letting our letting our results be a direct reflection of our process that we go about every week. And so um, continue to practice at a high level in order to perform at a high level. Josh, I just want to ask about integrating Zion Nelson and Jalen Knight and Becky Hobson, two important guys for you, and how you kind of go about it this week. You know, I think it's going to be very important that we kind of take a uh, take a process that's going to allow them to be comfortable with themselves. You know, obviously we'll never uh, take anyone getting thrust back into a lineup and just throw them out there, you know, for a significant amount of snaps. You saw this past week with Will Mallory. We had a, um, a very, very detailed plan on how many snaps we wanted Will um, to play and, and be involved in our offensive system. And so, um, and that's the best for the kids. We're, we're always going to do what's best for them from health and safety protocol first. And so... Um, just developing a plan, getting those guys back in practice, getting them back uh, out there as a unit, and just getting them comfortable, believing in themselves, believing in their ability. Uh, our training staff has done a great job, um, you know, rehabbing those guys, getting them acclimated, and we look forward to having them back part of our offense. Talk to us about the process of getting Lucius Stanley actually ready to take care of that play. Yeah, that was that was an amazing process by uh, Coach Smith and uh, and Coach Varner and uh, and the guys. They just you know they met with them all week, you know, just kind of. You know, and Lucius is a very mature guy. I mean, obviously, coming in, having um, played in, in, in college football before, taking significant snaps. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, they don't realize. I mean, it was maybe five or six days out that he's been here, so he had a lot to learn to be able to go in the game and execute signals, formations, uh, run schemes, what we're asking him to do. Uh, and that's credit to Lucius himself. You know, um, very, very mature approach last week. I don't think there was a time that I wasn't walking the halls in the office and I didn't see him in there meeting with Coach Smith, and so um, he knew how important it was. Obviously, football is very important to him, uh, and we're glad to have him part of our program. Coach, you mixed in some power and some zone on Saturday. How, support, how important is it for you to be diverse within the run blocking teams? Absolutely, it's very important. You know, we want to have great diversity in everything that we do and, and, and diversity in who touches the ball. Um, balance is what makes us unique as an offense because we have run-pass balance, we have different pass schemes balance, we have different run scheme balances. Uh, and when you have the ability to have that type of diversity in what you do, it makes it very hard to defend because people have to defend everything rather than trying to just stop one thing. And so, um, but, you know, what allows you to be able to have that diversity is your players. Uh, it's basically doing what your players allow you to do, what they can handle uh, and what they do best. And, and we've built our system here to allow to feature our players and what they do best. We'll do one more question for Coach Gattis. Coach, can you just talk about coaching from the box and also managing, coaching the receivers on the field and kind of what you what you saw there on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as I as I talk about the process of preparation and and, um, uh, and how you practice, I actually fell into a rhythm on Saturday that has never happened to me in the box before. I was actually signaling the personnel like I do in practice. I kept putting my hand up, and then I had to realize that I'm not on the field anymore. I'm in the box, and so. Uh, that was realization. And I told that to our players because that's just your your mind is reflecting back to whatever process you go through uh, each and every week. But uh, when I'm in the booth, it allows me to, to gain an advantage by seeing things. I'm able to see what an opponent uh, is trying to do to us offensively, um, schematically. I can understand how that defensive coordinator is trying to attack us. 
but it also allows me to be able to collect my thoughts and, uh, and kind of remove emotion from decision making, which I think is so valuable. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, to call the games from the field as well from the box, uh, and it's a totally different view when you're upstairs. I mean, just the peace and calmness uh, that you have to, to think and make wise decisions. Um, our receivers were obviously uh, managed by a group of individuals on the field. And, uh, Coach Crutchfield, our graduate assistant, who's been right-hand man to me uh, for a number of years, who I've uh, had the chance to work with uh, in previous institutions. Um, he was helped managing our receivers as well as uh, some of our analysts on the sideline, obviously just being there um, to be involved, Coach Cooney, Coach, uh, Coach Thompson, um, just being there for those guys, you know, being a, uh, just being a resource for those guys to instill confidence. And that was the biggest thing for us. It's not necessarily the X's and O's or the technical things. It's way when someone leaves the field, man, give that guy a high five. When they do something great, reinforce uh, that they did something positive. That way we can build that confidence up on the sideline uh, and have those guys go out the next series and be very, very confident. Obviously scoring 70 points, no punts, rushing game uh, was very efficient as well as, as, as receivers. How do you find uh, motivation for this next game and, and, and how do you really motivate the players to really continue to improve for week two? Well, believe it or not, we left a lot of meat on the bone, you know, and, 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 uh, and uh, we started our unit meeting off yesterday watching those plays that we felt like could have been better. The difference between an eight yard game and a 25 or a potential touchdown. Um, so there's still a ton of room to grow. Technique, fundamentals, footwork, hat placement, finishing, um, intent of plays. And so uh, we've got to show up hungry and, and, and eager, more eager to learn this week. And that's going to be the challenge, handling that success, uh, but still keeping ourselves in a humble mindset that we're going to be a direct reflection of our process. And so if we focus on the process of winning each week, the results will come with it. Awesome. Thanks, Coach Gavis. Thank you.